I forgot my coffee out there. And our heat pump that controls my office died on us. So it's like the only room that's dependent upon the heat pump. Might and the upstairs, which we don't go in very much, but it's an ice box in here. You wonder why I'm always wearing a hoodie. But the hot coffee usually takes the edge off. Ooh. Well, praying to find us some reasonable quotes to get our heat pump replaced. Um, yeah, yeah. So, brr. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. we're in starting in verse 38, 39. I think I put 38 in the title, but whatever. Uh, Pharaoh, he said to his servants, can we find such a one as this man in whom is the spirit of God? Ruach is breath and spirit. God breathed into some formed dirt he had collected and it became a man. Then Pharaoh said to Joseph, Inasmuch as God has shown you all this, there is no one as discerning and as wise as you. You shall be over my house, and all my people shall be ruled according to your word. Only in regard to the throne will I be greater than you. Joseph, Grand Vizier of Egypt. So, hey everybody. Cute pig, Sarah. Looks good. 41, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, See, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand, and he clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain around his neck. And he had him ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried out before him, Bow the knee. So he set him over all the land of Egypt. And Joseph, or Pharaoh said to Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without your consent, no man may lift his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. Pretty cool, huh? He's moving in the lead. Now, verse 45. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name Zaphnath Paenia. Now, remember that, because you know it's showing up on a Kahoot or a Bible quiz someday, right? I didn't even have that memorized. I'm going to have to try and commit that one to memory for, for random trivia when you do like, you know, Bible balderdash and you're the guy who actually knows what all the words mean. Zaphnath Paenia, which means savior of the world or supporter of life. Cool name, huh? And, his, he, and he gave him as his wife, Asenath, the daughter of Potiphera, priest of On. So Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Now, Asenath means dedicated to Neith, or yeah, and Neith is the, the goddess. Minerva, a.k.a. Athena. So, I mean, if you look at the Greek gods, the Egyptian gods, uh, the uh, Middle Eastern gods, like the Babylonian gods, many of these gods all have equivalents. And so Minerva, um, which I believe is the Babylonian, or Athena, which we should be familiar with. And Athena is, oh, uh, uh, Athena is... What is the Roman? Oh, it's going to kill me now. Anyway. So, uh, and uh, Potiphera, that name means given by Ra. So obviously you see Joseph's now intermingled with all of this uh, stuff going on in, uh, you know, these, these pagan people who are around him. But again, Joseph's Joseph's. He's holding his own. Fascinating. Joseph's going to have a shaved head because it's sexy and Egyptian. I'm just throwing that out there. The Bible says so basically. So you have to agree. And Joseph obviously was very attractive. It said that just a few ver verses ago. I love the Bible. Um, but Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Joseph went out from the presence of Pharaoh and went throughout all the land of Egypt. Now in the seven years of plentiful, the ground brought forth abundance. So he gathered up all the food in the seven years which were in the land of Egypt and laid up the food in the cities. And he laid up in every city the food of the fields which surrounded them. Joseph gathered very much grain of the sand of the sea until he stopped counting for it was immeasurable. Why are you laughing, Arla? I didn't say anything funny. Okay, anyway. Verse 50, And Joseph were born two sons. The years of the famine brought, uh, whom Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bore to him. Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God has made me forget all my toil and all my father's 
house. And so the idea is, is forgetting all the hardships that he had gone through. And then Ephraim, the, the, he called the name of his second son, for God has caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. And so, yeah, there we go. Um, then the seven years of plenty, which were in the land of Egypt, ended and the seven years of famine began to come. And Joseph had said the famine was all the lands, but in all the land of Egypt, there was bread. So when all the land of Egypt was famished, the people cried out to Pharaoh for bread. Then Pharaoh said to all the Egyptians, go to Joseph, whatever he says to you, do. The famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses and sold to the Egyptians. And the famine became severe in the land. So all the countries came to Joseph in Egypt to buy grain because the famine was severe in all the lands. Hmm. Now, I'm going to throw something out here. Well, yeah, Athena's wisdom, but there's the, you know, the Greek gods and the Roman gods all have, you know, know, Jupiter is Zeus. And I'm trying to remember Athena is what? Can't remember. Someone will Google that and post it. Um, Anyway, I'm just going to throw this thing out here. Um, We have a a little picture here because Joseph is a picture of Christ. We see a a Christ character in him. He's a type. Um, We don't have the anti-type exactly, you know, noted in the New Testament. It doesn't say it, but there's so many similarities there. And what do we find? Well, we find that he is cast away by his brothers. His brethren essentially leave him for dead. And then he goes and he gets himself a Gentile bride. And at the end of seven years of hell, he gets reunited with his brothers. There's something there, isn't there? I'm just throwing it out there. Agree or disagree. But we see a little bit of a picture there of Christ, I believe. But we also find that Joseph, he stays faithful through all the hell that he was facing. A good country song not long ago, right? If you're going through hell, just keep on going, right? Because you'll get through the other side. Uh, There's got to be more than one country song, probably. And um, I just saw the other day someone posted a meme that now with automated vehicles, cars that can drive themselves, country singers can now talk about their trucks leaving them. (laughs) Okay, so back to point, though, is Joseph got sold to slavery. Things are pretty bad. Joseph then gets put into prison. Things get worse. Yet Joseph keeps faithfully serving, faithfully using his gifts regardless of things not looking all that good in his life. And then eventually, what happens? He's elevated. He's lifted up. And the promises there we see of Manasseh and Ephraim. God makes him forget all of the pain that he had experienced. And he fills his life with fruitfulness. Whether in this life or most definitely the next, those promises will remain true to the believer who holds fast. Holds fast, keeps on going, keeps on serving, keeps on using the gifts that God has given you. And whether in this life or the next, oh yeah, we all hope for this life. Well, I'll tell you what, the better reward comes in the next. So, you know, just like a little kid. How many of your kids, right? None of us had these kids. A kid that knew if I just wait, that maybe later I can get something bigger or better. I don't know, Tina, you had Caleb and he's weird. So he might've actually saved up his money for stuff. But most of us had normal kids. And and I I was trying to explain to Judah yesterday. I was like, what is more important to you? What would you rather have? 10 trips to the arcade at Docks or a hoverboard? Those little car things, right? Because he kind of said he wants a hoverboard. Kids at his homeschooling group have hoverboards. And And he's like, I'd rather have a hoverboard. I go, I know. 
But what that means is, is last time we went to docks, we've never done this before, but we, I was being taken out there. And so I brought Judah along and I, he, he had given me a $10 roll of coins to put in his bank account. And so I saved the coins and I just gave him back a roll and said, go have at it, dude. He's never like played in an arcade like that before. And, but I made him think about it. It's like, yeah, he would trade in 10 trips. If you sat him on the couch and asked him 10 trips for the video games, that was fun, but I'd rather have a hoverboard. But you have to say no when you're at the arcade. And if you save up those 10 trips at $10 each, he could probably go buy himself a hoverboard. But quite often we want our best life now. That's not all that biblical. I'd hate to write a book about that. That'd be embarrassing. Um, but that's the thing is we all want to be satisfied now. I don't want slavery right now. I don't want prison right now. I want everything good right now. But we're told to hold out, hold fast. Even when everything looks like hell and you're in prison, keep serving, keep using your gifts. And watch, because one day God will make you forget. And that's actually funny. The name means making forgetful. Like supernaturally in heaven, you won't have the ability to remember the pain. And there's something good about that. Like, I'm going to wipe it all out. And you're not going to remember the things that hurt. I'm going to make you forget. And I'm going to fill your life with fruitfulness and blessing. And you'll always think, man, did God get the short end of this stick. <laughs> I get him and he gets me. I'm going to throw out one little thing. I saw this post not long ago and it was kind of like, and I, and I don't know, the whole best life now. It was a John MacArthur quote someone shared. You know, the only way to have your best life now is if you're going to hell. That was sobering, but I mean, it's like, uh, that's actually kind of true, right? I mean, the only way you can have your best life now is if you're going to hell, because if you're going to heaven and there's nothing here that could ever be considered better or even good in comparison to what God has planned for you. So when crap happens here, hold fast, keep serving. I, I do not deny that God wants to give you blessings in this life too. But we need to hold fast to the end. All right, church, hold fast. Keep doing what you know you ought to do. Keep serving. Keep on using those gifts. Keep on asking God, how can he use you to accomplish his will on the earth? And you will never regret serving the Lord and seeking his face. All right, guys, you all take care. Be good. And if you aren't good, just repent. God is always right there waiting to take you home. Love you.